All right. Hello, hello, and welcome to students, parents, and counselors who are joining our Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling virtual college fair this evening, powered by StriveScan. Students just want to give you a couple of reminders here before we pass it off to our presenters for the evening. Uh, you do have a Q&A button right down below. If at any point in time um, during the next 45 minutes you have a question for a representative, please feel free to um, use the Q&A down there. Um, your camera and microphone are off so our panelists cannot see or hear you. Also, please know there are two more hours of sessions this evening and also some sessions tomorrow night. Um, so take a look at that schedule if you're interested in hearing about other colleges and universities as well. And this recording will be available in the future at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. And without further ado, I am going to pass it off to our representative from Bemidji State University. Thank you so much, Kara. I'm gonna make sure everybody can see my screen here. So yeah, hello everyone. I'm Ashley Charwood. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I am an admissions rep and proud alumni here at Bemidji State University, which is located on the ancestral and contemporary homelands of the Lakota and Ojibwe Anishinaabe people. I'd like to thank the MACAC College Fair Planning Committee, students and families and teachers who are attending this presentation today. So BSU is located again on the shores of Lake Bemidji between three of the largest tribal nations in Minnesota. There are many cultural and social gatherings and language learning opportunities that are all within a reasonable distance to the university. BSU is located four hours north of Minneapolis St. Paul and two and a half hours south of the Canadian border. There are over 400 lakes within a 25 mile radius of campus and some of our most common programs and majors are our aqua biology department, our biology and business and nursing and technology arts and design. BSU was founded as a teacher school and we recently celebrated our 100th anniversary two years ago. BSU is one of a few schools in the nation that is located right on a lake. And another unique BSU trait is our tunnel system, which connects the residential hall to the academic area, which comes in super handy in the winter. BSU is home to Tamarack Hall, which is the tallest building in Beltrami County. Bemidji State University has around 5,000 students enrolled and a student to faculty ratio of 20 to 1. For sports, BSU is a Division II school except for men and women's hockey, which is D1. We offer 11 sports and there are over 90 student clubs and organizations on campus, including the Council of Indigenous Students, which offers leadership and social opportunities, as well as host an annual powwow. There's the Phoenix Club, which is the LGBTQA club on campus, and there's a newly formed club called the Black Student Union, which partners with local nonprofits and other student organizations to make an impact on and off campus. BSU also has different departmental and major specific clubs like the Social Work Club, Psychology Club, and the Young Business Leaders of America Club. And we also have our large club, that is our bird watching club, and another special interest based club called our Horizontally Challenge Club, which is a rock climbing club. There are over 60 different departmental majors and programs, including graduate programs and certificates on campus, as well as several distance learning and study abroad opportunities. As far as tuition goes at Bemidji State University, we have what is called banded tuition. So any credits taken over 12 are at no additional cost. Students oftentimes will use those for extra credits to take some fun classes, maybe work on a minor or take additional courses required for your degree. Tuition is a little under 19,000 and there are many foundation essay based scholarships available to help cover that cost where students can complete one application to be considered for over 400 different scholarships. We also have several automatic merit based scholarships as well that you might qualify for. Tuition includes unlimited access to the wellness center, mental health counseling and clinic visits, free black, white and color printing, dorm room cable, washer and dryer fees, and access to fun on campus sports and events. There are many supportive services for students such as advising, accessibility and veteran services. We also have the Student Center for Diversity, Equity and Inclusion and an American Indian Resource Center, which was created in 2003 
and is located in a beautiful round shaped state of the art building. The AIRC, as we call it, has several coming together gatherings, <clears throat> study sessions, meals, learning events, and social opportunities for all students. BSU has many programs with an Indigenous specific focus, like our Indigenous Nations and Marketing Program, our Criminal Justice with the Tribal Justice Emphasis, and our Indigenous Sustainability Studies Programming. BSU is also home to the first Indian Studies Program in Minnesota and the first Collegiate Ojibwe Language Program in the world. We also have Sustainable Focus Programming, which offers Bucky's Bikes Rental, a free store, and a butterfly and vegetable garden. This slide here is talking about our financial aid and our FAFSA opens October 1st of each year and BSU's FAFSA code is 002336. There are opportunities to work on campus and students are encouraged to become a student worker. Maybe even consider being a university ambassador and come work with me in admissions and give tours to visiting families. The fall 2021 application is currently open and the fall 22 application will open for current juniors June 1st. To apply to BSU, visit our website, complete and submit the application, use the promo code TOUR to waive that application fee and work with your high school guidance counselor to send in your high school transcripts and submit any college transcripts that you might have. Also send in any ACT scores that you have we are currently ACT test flexible through fall of 2022, yet scores are still required for consideration for some of our scholarships. Another point to remember is that BSU is allowing super scoring. So if you take the ACT more than once, we will accept your top scores. BSU's ACT code is 2084. We have virtual tours on our website and students have the option of meeting virtually one-on-one -on -one with admission reps daily. Lastly, BSU is a beautiful campus and don't just take my word for it. Take this as a personal invitation from BSU to you to come to campus and take a tour and see campus for yourself. Visit the Bemidji State University's website for more information about the admissions criteria, academic offerings, financial aid and scholarship information, as well as sign up for a tour, meet your admission reps and apply. We look forward to connecting with you soon. Go Beavers. Thanks, Kara. Thank you so much. And we will now pass it off to our representative from Clarkson University. Back to my beginning. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. My name's Kim. I am from Clarkson University. Um, Clarkson is located in Northern New York. So about a half hour from the Canadian border. Uh, we're in a small rural town, uh, but in the same town um, that is surrounded by three other colleges. So. Um, it's a great college town atmosphere, uh, a lot of students, a lot of things to do, um, but also a very safe environment to study and thrive um, and also have fun. Um, our application requirements include um, your official high school transcript, two letters of recommendation. Um, we do prefer one from a guidance counselor and one from a teacher. Um, feel free to send more if you do have additional teachers or even a boss or a coach. Um, who you really want some uh, want to write you a letter of recommendation, we will absolutely take it and review it. Um, we are SAT or ACT optional for the applicants for 2022. Uh, with that said, if you are able to take it and you want us to con consider your score as part of your application, um, still feel free to send it. We will still accept it. Um, if you are not able to take it or you do take it, maybe you don't love your score, um, you don't have to send it either though. Uh, we do take the common application, which is very convenient. Uh, we also have our own Clarkson application. Um, so a couple of options to apply through. Uh, we have no preference though, so whichever one works best for you is fine with us. Um, both are also free to um, be used, so when the time comes. Um, so our main areas of study are engineering, science, and the School of Arts and Business. Uh, we do require uh, four years of math and science for engineering and then four years of math and science for our sciences. For arts and business majors, we require three years of math and science. Our School of Engineering uh, encompasses about 50 to 60% of our student body. Uh, we have nine different uh, main areas of study uh, listed on this slide, so um, several different areas of engineering. Um, we also have several minors, concentrations um, that include architectural engineering, structural, um, there's project management that kind of falls within business, but also very common with our engineering students. 
Um, so a lot of options within that field. If you're undecided with engineering, you can come in under our engineering studies track your first year and get a feel for all the different areas that we do offer um, and then decide by the end of your freshman year which one you actually want to pursue. Um, we also offer the School of Business, which includes six different majors. Uh, our School of Business is about 25% of our student body. All of our business students are required to start their own um, business their freshman year. Um, so it's a little bit like Shark Tank if you do watch that show on TV. So it's a lot of fun. Um, you also are required to study abroad as a business major so that you get that international experience. Um, our science programs, um, we offer different math programs, um, sciences, um, environmental um, majors as well. We have an Institute for a Sustainable Environment on campus, which houses our environmental majors as well as research opportunities, internships, clubs, um, things along those lines. Uh, we are more of a STEM school, but we do offer um, arts programs. Um, they do have a little bit of a STEM um, foundation to them though, so um, they, which is important. So our digital arts and science and communications programs kind of overlap with computer science a little bit when it comes to animation and game design. Um, and then we do offer history, humanities, liberal studies, uh, political science and social documentation, uh, which is a really cool major too. So a lot of options. And if you're in one school, you can always minor or take classes in another area. Um, you don't have to just stick to your one uh, major or, or school. Um, you're, you're able to kind of, um, you know, pursue other areas that you might have an interest in as well outside of your major. We also offer several pre-health programs, uh, pre-med, pre-dental, pre-vet, uh, pre-physical therapy, pre-occupational therapy, and pre-physician's assistant. Uh, we do have the doctor of physical therapy right on campus and then the masters for um, OT and PA right on campus as well. Um, the pre-advising programs are special advising tracks, so you would still major in something um, for your undergrad degree, but also have this pre-help um, advisor helping to prepare you to go on to med school or a master's program, doctorate program, whichever it might be. If you're undecided, it's totally okay with us. Uh, it's hard to say what you want to do at this point, that's for sure. Um, so as I mentioned with engineering, engineering studies, which is the undecided engineering major, uh, we, we offer that for all of our other areas as well. So if you know you want something within that area, but you're not sure exactly what, you can come in, get a feel for all the different areas that we offer within that, um, within that field. And then basically you have until end of your freshman year, middle of sophomore year to declare which one you do want to declare as a major. So being undecided is okay, uh, just means you have a lot of interest. Uh, we do offer um, professional experiences. We require that all students do complete one by the time they graduate. Um, so this can be completed through an internship over the summer, a co-op, which would be a semester long work experience, or you can also do research with a professor. Um, and then, as I mentioned, study abroad is uh, required of our business majors, but it is open to all students as well. Uh, we have about 55 schools that we're partnered with in 28 countries so that you're taking the same classes that you need with Clarkson during that time, so you're not behind or anything, you're still on track to graduate within the four years. Uh, we do have over 250 different clubs and organizations on campus. Uh, we are a residential school, so most students do stay on campus all weekend. Um, there's lots to do, a lot of outdoor activities, academic clubs. Like I said, we're about a half hour from Canada, so Ottawa and Montreal are very close and cool cities to visit. Uh, we do have D1 men's and women's hockey as well, and then Division Three for all of our other sports. Um, we are the Golden Knights, so a lot of fun. So, um, so yeah, thanks for um, tuning in. And um, we are, like I said, um, in Northern New York, but we are open for visits if you are um, interested in visiting. So thank you. Thank you so much. We will move on now to our presenter from Earlham College. Okay, let me share my screen real quick. Okay, hi everybody, I'm Maggie Bain from Earlham College. Um, we'll just get right into it. So a little quick fun facts about Earlham. Um, so we are a small liberal arts school in the Midwest. We're located in Richmond, Indiana. Um, we were founded by Quakers in 1847. Um, you don't have to be Quaker affiliated to come here, but we do have the principles and practices of a Quaker faith kind of just embedded in the traditional school, different like classroom environments, fun things like that. 
Um, we have a really strong international and global influence and connection on campus. 20% um, of our Earlham student body is um, international students. So you're getting a lot of global influence here on Earlham's campus. And then we have a really uh, great study abroad opportunities, internships and things like that, that you can get outside of campus as well. Um, we do have every state and over 60 different countries represented. So it adds into that very distinctive community, um, like it says right there. And then our faculty members do create a really rigorous um, kind of courses for our students, but definitely getting the support system to equal it out, whether that is with our career counselors, different tutoring opportunities, um, all that kind of good stuff. So here's a list of all the different majors and minors we, that we have to choose from. Um, since we are liberal arts, we have a little bit of everything from social science, lab science, humanities, fine arts, um, some integrated pathways that can get you more specifically like museum studies, um, just some examples like that. We have a little bit of everything. So if you're looking for more traditional things like biology, psychology, any kind of art program, um, we do have some fun, unique ones, even in our smaller class sizing, um, like environmental sustainability is really popular. Um, global management is kind of like our business program. Um, it's just worded in a different way. <laughs> um, so yeah, we do have six um, graduate programs as well. We have plenty of um, education backgrounds, so you can um, be a part of our three plus one program, which is basically three years focusing on some kind of um, high school level course, whether that's English, history, um, math, anything like that. And then on your fourth year, um, you'll be able to be in the classroom and you'll actually walk away with a master's degree rather than just a bachelor's in a four year kind of time frame. Um, so those are, that's just an example of some of the grad programs that we do offer, even in our smaller kind of class sizing. Speaking of class sizes, <laughs> um, so on average, your in your major classes can get upwards to 13 students, which is a nine to one student to faculty ratio. Um, we still have plenty of larger lecture hall kind of for your first year kind of exploratory courses, but those get upwards to maybe like 60 students in a lecture hall for like beginners biology or anything like that. Um, so you're gonna get a lot more like the hands-on learning, um, a lot more attention from your professors, get to know your classmates really well, just because it's gonna be smaller class sizes that some of you might be more interested in attending. Either you're coming from a big public school and wanting a smaller class size feeling, or you're coming from you know a smaller private school or anything like that and wanting to continue that feeling as well. Oops. There we go. We have this really great program. Um, it's called our Earlham Advantage, and it is a funded internship or research opportunity for every single one of our students. Um, so every student has the ability to use this funding to go take internships all around the world, all around the United States, even in their own backyard, um, if they just needed some funding to do anything like that. Um, it can get awards to $5,000. So really easy to apply for every like I said every student gets one um, and most of those internships do turn around and become employers for our um, for our students. Okay, so we do have 60 um, student led organizations of so different clubs on campus and it is all really easy to um, start your own club create your own tradition here at Earlham, but of course we have 60 other ones so. <laughs> They all kind of range from different topics, whether that's service-based clubs, cultural clubs, political clubs, um, kind of like the miscellany, which kind of falls into a little bit of everything, rec sports, all that good stuff. We do have 17 men's and women's Division III NCAA teams. So our coaches do a really good job of making sure that you're focusing on your academics, um, creating really great study tables, maintaining that athletic GPA, um, but you know, continuing that fun loving sport that you probably grew up doing in a collegiate level is awesome. And then we do have eight residence halls on campus. We do have themed housing. It's not themed off based off like sororities or fraternities. It's more like um, different clubs and majors kind of have the ability to have a whole house dedicated to that theme of a major or a club. And we do have apartment style living as well, um, which a lot of our upperclassmen like to take advantage of. This talks a little bit about the different um, emissions processes that we ask for and 
financial aid. So if any of you are still looking to apply, um, we did just open up our application again. So if you're still maybe curious after watching this presentation today, um, take a look at it. We're on the Common App. We also do have our own RLM application. Um, we do ask for all these different criteria, <laughs> um, whether that's an extracurricular activity, personal essays, high school transcripts. We are an established test optional school. So pre this year, we were already established and know what to do with different financial aid op options and stuff like that. Um, so just throwing that out there for everybody. Um, plenty of different merit scholarships, need-based aid. And thank you for listening to me talk about our own tonight. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks so much. Uh, we will now pass it off to our presenter from Miami University. All right. Hi, folks. Uh, my name is Mitch Arnett, and I'm one of the senior assistant directors for regional enrollment at Miami University. Uh, go ahead and go through this flipbook with you here. A little background about Miami. We are located in a small college town called Oxford, Ohio. Uh, there are about 9,000 people that live in the city of Oxford, Ohio. And then the enrollment population is about 17,200 undergraduate students. So the size of the university is actually larger than the town that we are in. And we are certainly known for teaching at the undergraduate level. We don't have a lot of graduate students at Miami. So you'll see we have just over 2,200 graduate students. We are a public university, which a lot of people don't know. Uh, so we were established in 1809 as a public university, and we are named after the Miami tribe that used to live throughout the Southwest region of Ohio. Um, so a lot of people wonder why, why in the world we are in Ohio. Um, it just so happens that a man from Dayton, Ohio moved to Southern Florida to sell real estate, and he liked the name Miami, so brought that name down to uh, Southern Florida. We are a liberal arts university as well, so our students will be taking a lot of classes outside their disciplines. So you'll see we do require our students to uh, go through what we call the Global Miami Plan. So no matter what students' majors are, they still have to take uh, well-rounded courses such as English, Humanities, Life and Natural Life Sciences, Math, Foreign Language is only required for students in the Arts and Science. Um, so a lot of our students will double major or have majors and minors. It's very popular for students to have a nice well-rounded well experience at Miami. It's a very undergraduate focused institution. 98% uh, of our students live within a mile of campus. Housing is required on campus the first two years. We also represent all 50 states in our student body. We have 85 foreign countries represented as well. So geographic diversity is very big at Miami. We also have study abroad opportunities. So you'll see we do have programs in just over 90 countries abroad. The most common time to go abroad would be for semester junior year, but we also have some summer programs and we have spring break trips, winter term as well. Uh, fun fact, we have our own campus in Luxembourg. So Luxembourg is a very popular option with our students because they pay the same tuition and fees as if they would be in Oxford. We have five divisions and the Department of Nursing. We have the College of Arts and Science, 60, uh, 60 or more majors of our 60 more majors fall within CAS. And then we have creative arts. Uh, so if you're thinking about becoming a graphic designer, architect, uh, theater major, all those programs are in CCA. We also have engineering and computing. This setup is a little bit different than some other colleges. For students interested in majoring in engineering or uh, computing, just know that if you would be admitted to Miami, you would automatically be admitted into this division. Next is education, health, and society. So if you are thinking about becoming a teacher, maybe an athletic trainer, physical therapist, uh, dietetic, um, all these uh, majors are gonna be housed within EHS. Next is the former School of Business. We have eight majors within the School of Business. And I do wanna note that it is direct admission. So it's really important that students indicate business as their primary major if they want a business degree from Miami. Last but not least is the Department of Nursing. Nursing is also direct admit, meaning that you apply while you are a senior and we'll give you a decision during your senior year. Uh, we, this is the only major at Miami that is open to first year applicants. So it's really important that you apply nursing if you're considering nursing. At Miami, we have just over 110 majors. So you can see we have a lot of options for our students here. Like I said before, very common to double major or have majors and minors. We also have this co uh, co-major. So anything with an asterisk is a co-major. So it's not a degree program, but it's an additional area of emphasis. We also have undeclared if you don't know what you want to study. And then we also have these pre-professional programs. Average classroom size at Miami is about 30 students. The student to teacher ratio is 17 to one. And at any given time, roughly 2,000 students are doing undergraduate research. So research is a big part of Miami's culture. 
We have three honors programs here. First is the Honors College. We have the Prodesse Scholars. And then we also have the Presidential Fellows Program, which is our Fulbright Scholarship. Uh, I don't have too much time to talk about them specifically, but there is a lot of information on the website. Um, feel free to connect with me later if you have any questions about that. We do require our students to live on campus the first two years. We have uh, 47 residence halls, 25 dining options, and 35 living learning communities. And these are themed environments uh, for students to choose from to live with other students with similar academic or social interests. We also have over 600 student activities on our campus. So being bored is definitely not in our vocabulary. You can see that students are active in, a, in an array of organizations, 18 division one teams, 50 club teams. Uh, about a third of our students are active in intramural sports and about 25% of our students are active in a fraternity or sorority. All right, a uh, little uh, information about internships. We do draw roughly 4,700 organizations to our campus every year for the internship and job search. So I just want you to know that our students are very successful with not only their time at Miami, but also their time after they graduate from Miami. Here's some information on the tuition and fees. Uh, we are a public university, so Minnesota folks, uh, you'll be taking a look here as the, at, at the out-of-state rates. We do have a frozen tuition policy. So if you come to Miami, you're going to keep your tuition and fees locked in up to four years. Um, so another way to keep Miami's education most affordable. We are on the common application. That's the only way that you can apply. And you'll see the deadlines for this current year posted here. We will uh, share the deadlines for next year in the, in the future. Uh, we are also test optional for fall 2021. We have not made a decision for fall 2022 yet or future years, but it's very likely that we will continue remaining test optional. Here's some information on the scholarships. This is published on the grid, but just note that the, the, uh, the grid does change a little bit over time. And last but not least is information on visiting campus. All right. Great, thank you so much. We will pass it off now to Minnesota West Community and Technical College. Good evening, this is Rick Vanderwoody. I'm gonna share my screen here. Hopefully I got everything sent out as I needed to. Uh, the most uh, important thing I'd like to get out is the fact that we're a community and technical college. We do have a free application all spring. Um, there is no ACT required. You basically have to uh, complete your high school diploma. Um, there's an asset test that we give for free if you haven't taken the ACT. So, um, Basically, what I like to explain is the technical part of education is different than what you might see as a liberal arts education in the past. So if you like working with your hands, if you like uh, basically getting dirty, getting busy, I like to quote Mike Rowe a lot. We're trying to help close the skills gap in the country. So we do have the hands on technical programs. They're four days a week. Uh, basically, you'll spend one hour in a classroom. You'll spend the rest in a lab learning to do the skill that you're gonna be trained to do. Uh, tuition, um, as a community college, we're uh, $194 a credit if you do online, uh, that will go up a little bit. We do have several campus locations. So we are in the Southwest part of Minnesota, which uh, we basically cover the, the entire corner of the state. So we have six campus locations and each campus is kind of unique, has its own program as to uh, as program specific. So uh, basically Canby, Minnesota, Granite Falls, Jackson, Minnesota, Pipestone, Minnesota, Worthington, Minnesota, Laverne Center. Um, as I said, they cover the entire Southwest corner of the state. So we do, we do support our communities uh, greatly here, which is awesome. Um, and basically what uh, each campus offers is basically specific to what program you're interested in. Um, the technical programs are on certain campuses. If you wanted to do a diesel mechanic, you would have to go to the Canby campus. Uh, if you wanted to do a weld program, you'd be on the Jackson campus. So not traditional as most colleges are. We have the six locations. And again, we have the technical ed. Um, basically, we marry it with the, the liberal arts education. So if you wanted to get something and go on to a four-year school, we give you that as well. I'm going to move to degrees offered. Uh, what I like to talk about is we can get you in and out of school with a certificate. It could be a CNA for a certified nursing assistant. It could be a welding certificate. So we can get a student into school and out within 
a semester, which would be considered a certificate, which would be the amount of maybe $2,000 and you're certified to do a skill that pays a pretty good, pretty good wage and you can be out in the world to work. A diploma is a one-year program. So as you would say, it's nine months, uh, like your school, like your senior year of, of high school, uh, you can get a diploma. Uh, again, you're basically, you, you'll get uh, the degree that gets you out into the world of work and, uh, and basically get your hands dirty, get paid well. And if you ever wanna come back to school, uh, we always say it'll always be there for you. But if we can get you into the world of work and you can prove yourself as a good worker, uh, basically we like to see employers pay for i actually pay for the kids to go back to school to learn the skills uh all of this is trying to keep down the student's debt uh student debt is uh, it's crushing and we want to basically get people into a skill get them trained get their wage up um, and get them into the world of work and prove themselves as good people good workers and then have have the employers uh send send our students back for training um we do go all the way up to the liberal arts degree. Uh, you can get a two-year degree and you can take that on into any four-year school if you if you chose to do that. Uh, or you can go in with that two-year degree, your associate's degree, and you're employable with that as well. Uh, a little bit about each campus. We do have sports. Um, and, and the Worthington campus is our largest campus. It's our biggest city. It's close to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, the sports and the housing is on the Worthington campus. The other locations don't all have housing, uh, depending on what programs you're looking at. Um, but we do have a, a two-year nursing program. Uh, it's a two-year nursing degree. The first year actually is uh, uh, the one-year nursing program. You're actually employable after that. And then uh, if you do the two-year RN program, you're basically able to take the, the two-year RN test. We do a, a BSM program with uh, Southwest Minnesota State, so you can get your two-year RN degree um, with Minnesota West, go to work, and then if you wanted to move that into your BSN, you can do that as well. Um, with that, again, I think I just want to wrap up and say, uh, I, I did men mention in the chat, mnwest.edu, everything is located on that. There is no ACT requirement. It's $194 a credit free application right now all the way uh, into the summer uh, and if you have any questions shoot me a chat thank you excellent thank you so much uh, and our next presenter is from mount mercy All right. Well, thank you, everyone, uh, for taking time out of uh, your busy evenings to join us here. Uh, so my name is Adam. I'm an admissions counselor here with Mount Mercy University. And let me go ahead and share my screen here, go through a little brief presentation. OK. All right. Well, Mount Mercy University. We are a small liberal arts college um, down in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So it's only about four hours um, from the Twin Cities. We are were founded in 1928 by the Sisters of Mercy. So we are a traditional Catholic university, but you don't have to be Catholic to come here. There's no required mass or anything like that. We have all of the groups, um, but everything is voluntary to participate in. So we're a pretty small school. Uh, so we only have about 1900 students in total. Um, so we get students from all over the US as well as um, several international students as well. So your degree from Mount Mercy can take you well beyond Iowa um, and international, if you will. So we're also, like I said, located in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So the second largest city um, in the state of Iowa. So plenty of different resources for you um, to complete internships um, and do some job shadowing too, just kind of depending on your major. Um, so we do offer over 45 different majors and minors here at Mount Mercy University, with our top program being nursing. We're actually founded as a nursing school, um, but we've also grown several different um, programs kind of throughout our history. So while the main one is still nursing uh, that we're known for, our um, pre-med and uh, pre-dentistry programs have really taken off as well, as well as uh, we've introduced sports management, as well as exercise science and public health recently. 
Um, so growing majors, as well as we just added a new wing um, to our education department. So always looking to grow programs and finding different needs um, within the state of Iowa and beyond. You also have um, a few programs here that you can get your degree in three years, just kind of dependent on how many uh, credits you bring in from a two-year uh, community or technical college. So there are possibilities there as well. Uh, at Mount Mercy University, we do have several different academic-based scholarships to make um, college as affordable as possible. So as you can kind of see here, they go based off of your GPA and or your test scores, whichever one's higher, um, we will get, bop you up to the next level there. Um, so we are test optional this year. If you haven't had the opportunity to take the ACT or SAT, we will just go off of your GPA. So we offer a lot of academic-based scholarships as well as um, athletics, music, art design, writing, sustainability, um, and then a, a few uh, different major specific ones uh, for social work, business, and education. So we try to make college as affordable as possible. We have um, usually a scholarship for everyone. So no one pays um, full tuition out of pocket, which is always nice. We also do have our Holland Full Tuition Scholarship. So this is uh, eligible for one student each year. Um, you apply for this, you have to have a minimum GPA of a 3.7. This one you do have to take either the ACT or the SAT for uh, to be eligible for. And then you participate uh, in our scholarship day, which is kind of just learning more about Mount Mercy. Um, it's sort of like a large group visit day, um, although we're doing it virtually this year. So. Talking a little bit more about our music programs, I am actually our music outreach, outreach specialist. So I recruit all of our music students uh, in part to Mount Mercy University. So we have our choir, show choir, um, jazz singers, liturgical singers, um, as well as we have our university band, pet band, jazz band, and chamber ensembles. We are actually one of the few schools in the Midwest to actually have a show choir. So that's kind of the unique part about Mount Mercy. And like I said, we do offer scholarships um, as well. So we also do have athletics. We participate in the NAIA. Um, so it's kind of comparable to division three NCAA. We have pretty much every sport except uh, football and wrestling. We don't have a football team. Um, so we don't have a marching band either, um, but all the other sports we do have, uh, scholarships are available for those as well. Uh, and here's just a few pictures of our athletic facility. So we have our Hennessy um, Recreation Center. So that has our basketball courts and volleyball courts, as well as a badminton court, some workout equipment there. But um, our new facility is our Renanek Athletic Facility. It's only about a year and a half old. Um, that's where you have all of your free weights, your cardio, it has golf simulators, a short track for sprints, batting cages, um, and athletic trainings down there as well. So then you can also see our um, athletic center, our plaster athletic complex. So that has our soccer field, our track, our softball, and our baseball fields too. So those are only about two years old, so also fairly newer as well. The application process here at Mount Mercy. Um, so these are um, automatic admissions requirements. So a cumulative GPA of a 2.75 and then um, a minimum ACT of 20 or SAT of 1030 gets you automatically admitted into Mount Mercy University. Uh, if you go test optional, then it is um, a 3.0 or higher that gets you admitted into um, our school. But then again, we also do individual um, evaluations for students. So if you have a lower GPA than that, we will ask you probably for a transcript and a personal statement, really just to get to know you because, you know, things happen in life. Um, maybe something happened your freshman or sophomore year, your grades went down a little bit. Um, so we do take that into account and we do admit students um, with lower uh, than those GPAs and test scores as well. So just going through the college search process, um, we always encourage students to visit as many schools as you're possibly interested in. You know, we always recommend look at a large state university, look at a small private university like Mount Mercy, and then look at um, possibly a, a technical college or community college as well. That way you get a good feel um, for what school kind of fits you the best. And you can apply to those schools, submit your FAFSA, and then make a choice 
see which school you decide to go to. You'll submit um, a deposit here at Mount Mercy. It's just a $200 deposit. Um, and then that kind of lets us know you're interested and then you register for classes. But thanks uh, for taking the time to listen to my little spiel here. Uh, we have a couple of QR codes where you can apply or request information. Um, and there's my information at the top as well. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Students, we have just a couple of minutes left here in our session. Um, so I'm going to invite our panelists um, so that we can use our time together here to uh, answer just one question. Um, the same question for everyone. We'll start at the top with Bemidji State. Um, and I'd like to know what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And I would just suggest to anybody going through that process to really reach out to the reps at each of these schools, get to know them, feel free to call, text, email, set up a Zoom, at least at BSU, that is what we are there for. We, we really enjoy connecting with students, whether or not this is your school or not. If you have questions, we wanna help just kind of support you and point you in the right direction. So my advice would be to reach out to those admissions reps all right, and Clarkson. I would definitely echo um, what you said. Um, feel, you know, don't be nervous. Don't hesitate to reach out to the admissions reps. That is what we're here for. Uh, we want to help, um, you know, find the best fit for our universities, but help you find the best fit um, for you as well. Um, college is a great four years or more if you go on for, you know, any master's programs um, of your life. So uh, want to make sure you get the right fit. Um, I also tell people too. Um, try not to do what, you know, everyone else in your high school did last year, or maybe at a sibling, the same school, whatever it might be, you know, try a few different others It might, what they did might not be the right fit for you. So, you know, don't be afraid to look at other schools or try um, things that might be a little bit different. Um, they might be perfect for you. So. Excellent. How about Erlem? Yeah, definitely like Ashley said, reaching out to your reps is a good one. Um, I would say also like if you can plan any kind of in-person visits or even in virtual visits, um, definitely getting that kind of authentic experience from the, your authentic experience from the school, just visiting for the first time, um, that can really, you know, make, make or break those kind of decisions for you. Great, and Miami? Sorry, I thought we were each getting different questions. Is it, what advice do we have or? What advice would you give for someone okay. going through the search process? Got it, that's what I thought. Okay, so my advice for this is just so that when you do go visit campus that uh, there isn't a lot of time for the general information sessions. Um, you know, they might last 20 to 30 minutes. So if you have very specific questions, um, with learning disabilities, or maybe you want to meet with um, the equestrian coach, you know, these are things that we probably aren't going to have time to cram into um, for the information sessions. So definitely invest in uh, the time to reach out to additional folks um, when you do come to campus, that way you can get all your question, uh, questions answered. And Minnesota Community and Tech? Not sure if he's there. How about Mount Mercy? Yeah, so just to echo kind of what everyone else said, um, really take the time, visit each college, see which one's the best fit for you. Um, ask those questions, take the time really, um, because this is a big decision. This is one where you're gonna spend the next four years of your life. Um, so also you really wanna ask the financial aid questions too. Um, and my one recommendation is apply for as many outside scholarships as you possibly can. Um, because you don't want to pay off your 20s and your 40s. All right. Thank you so much for all of this information from our panelists for answering my last question there. Students, we are about at our time here. Uh, so I just want to let you know that as you click out of the webinar, there will be a quick four question survey. Uh, we ask that you please fill that out for us as we build future programming. Uh, there are, are more sessions uh, this evening and also tomorrow evening for the Minnesota uh, Virtual Fair. Uh, so check those out. And if you'd like to see this again, you can see it at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. Thank you all for joining us this evening and have a great night. Bye. Thank you.